Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Factorio, Bob's Angels. Uh, welcome back to the lovely field of Red Death surrounding us and supposedly the rest of the planet. Uh, but yeah, welcome to episode 11. Uh, we start with this lovely view, just to have a look around at everything. So, the agenda for this episode is coal. And look, we start with a car. I finally got one built. We researched it a little while ago. Uh, it's going to be very handy for extra inventory space and, of course, getting around quickly, obviously. Um, so we start hopping up and down to get the train, which is the first thing I forget. And I end up forgetting a number of other things that we need to get started on this. Uh, now, everything's flashing yellow because I've disconnected the power. There's next to nothing coming through from the single remaining coal miner. So I've switched that off. It was all flashing red. Uh, flashing yellow is slightly less annoying. We got our temporary file train loaded up with some track, uh, some landfill that I keep going back up and down for because I get some, then I don't think it's enough, then I get some more, then I finally decide to leave and we head down south to the coal patch. Now, we could use this one right next to us on the track, but currently it's too close to biters and I don't really want to use it. I want to use the larger one. So, hence why we need the landfill to get across this lake. So we switch bridge water on, on file, and we head across the lake. Now, I don't always like filling everything in with land, but we need this connection across, which is going to eventually cut through the Bob's subbus, which is going to be pretty uh, suicidal, but we need to get across somewhere at the moment. And we could always move it, you know, later on, but that's going to be ages away. So we hop across the lake and get the rail and everything set up for the coal station. There's plenty of space here. Uh, it's nicely lined up with the patch and we rename it to Coal 1. We start setting up the uh, buffer for the station. Uh, we have a few trees that we need to clear, um, but we start getting everything laid out. So the idea is, is that I get all this laid out, I get it all powered uh, and then in between episodes, I created a bit of a coal buffer with the last miner. Uh, it's basically just a full transport belt of coal that will connect once this is all done. Uh, which will hopefully give it enough boost to uh, get the coal up and running. So we get all the tracks nicely laid out. Uh, we get the buffer. Uh, start off doing it uh, horizontal and then I decide to change it to vertical. Not a real big issue, but it ends up fitting quite nicely. Uh, this is to balance it, I mean, uh, most people will know, but this is just to balance it equally so that each carriage gets roughly the same amount. So you're not sat there waiting for one carriage to be filled while the others are full. Uh, so we use the nanobots to clear the field like normal. I start doing it manually and then I realise I have nanobots. I keep forgetting they're there. Same with the picker function as well. Uh, and we get attacked while setting up the mining area. Um, which to begin with I just put down some crude turrets uh, but they do keep on coming while we're building so I decide to go and clear this new base out which wasn't showing on the minimap uh, so it can't have been here too long and uh, this is a bit fiddly as I only have uh, five turrets on me which <laughs> it's a bit weird but luckily it's a very small base hasn't been allowed to expand yet so I could start placing miners down on the infinite bit in the middle but I want to clear out all these bits around the edges so that once we hit the infinite bit, we'll know exactly how much coal we're going to get out of this. Now, I don't really know how the infinite patches work on this. Uh, I don't know if it's like coal where as you mine it, it slowly decreases the amount you get from it. But I don't know. We'll see. I've never actually done infinite ores before. I usually have it switched off. So we get uh, part of the belt upgraded to red. I'm not sure if we'll need it straight away, but it will mean all these feed through nicely. So now that's all hooked up, um, I uh, set up adding the depot back, which is currently called Jerkos. I don't know why, I think that's just the name it was given when I built it. Um, so I'll need to change that in a minute. And we alter these signals for this one-way system, which I would, uh, sorry, one-lane system, which I would never normally do. But this is a means to an end. It's allowing us to get the Javolite and coal in nice and early. And I just don't have the space to place the permanent rail system that I would like and I'm not going to build two separate temporary systems it's just too much tearing down and rebuilding 
So this is the the final remaining miner, which I used as a little buffer. Uh, I connect up the smelting again, uh, but I think I disconnect it again when coal's coming through because we don't want any coal going that way. Uh, but yes, we sent the train back, which is hopefully getting loaded with a bit of coal. Uh, it's got a 30 second um, timer on it as well as when it's full. Or do I send it back without actually picking any coal up yet? I think I've sent it back. Because uh, I think I'm going to go and ride it down. Um, we make sure that we're generating at least some power. Uh, so that we can start to uh, purge the system. I mean there's not enough in there at the moment to keep it running. But this is just to get a bit of coal from the station. So we head back on the train back down to the coal station. Uh, Mr. Powell for the inserters. And I've also forgotten to turn off the uh, the Bob's adjustable inserters GUI. So we have to replace all the fast inserters. I replaced the first row and then just copy and paste the settings to the second one. I don't know why. Uh, the other option probably would have been quicker. So we get a bit of coal in the train and we head back to uh, the depot, which has now been renamed to Depot 1. Which is a bit more adequate. Um, once I build the permanent unloading station which I still haven't decided where it's going to go they'll all just be named the same I'm going to try and build an omni uh, unloading station but do it with belts not bots which is what I'd normally do but it does use an absurd amount of power uh, and the only reason that last carriage there was uh, uh, being emptied in an unbalanced manner that's a bit of an odd way of saying it was because I manually put some coal in there while I was down there I was trying to help out being a human inserter. So we get some coal back into the system again, uh, which had run out by the time we got back, which will give us more coal than that first trip and eventually have the system fully running. And we also sort out the train fueling and, and then quickly dangerously jump on the train while it's moving. A uh, bit of a risky move, but I come and check the signals because I'm still not exactly sure if it's going to work properly, but it looks like it's going to. Probably even got some extra signals there I don't need. I don't really know. Uh, I don't experiment with it and I've always been slightly confused by signals. So we uh, halt the train and hop in the back again. I'm quite enjoying hopping in the back of the train because it sounds different. The engine's not as loud uh, and you hear the sound of the rails the, or the, the, the train on the rails louder. And it also tests the ability to for one train to wait behind the other without delaying that train in the station from leaving, thus causing a complete deadlock. So the system's a little bit more purged, but we help it out manually. Uh, and we come back and check the unloading, which is kind of weird and cool. And also worrying to see both coal and Chavolite coming out of the uh, unloading depot. But yeah, it's not something I'd normally uh, do, but it's a, it's a means to an end, like I said earlier. Now, this area down here for the blue science packs, I did rebuild in between episodes. I didn't really feel the need to, to record it. Uh, all I've done is moved over the uh, assembly production, production, no, assembly, assemblers is what I was going for. I don't know. I've moved them over so they share the same output belt as the engines, uh, which has generated a bit more space. It's essentially used up a line reserved for beacons, but they can still be beaconed from... Uh, either side with Bob's lovely large range uh, beacons. Uh, but it also meant that I could fit a second line uh, input of iron and place five iron cog assemblers for each assembler assembler. Because I didn't have enough for them to function at full speed before, which they probably don't need to compared to the engines. But I'll probably expand the science in the future and that should give it enough space. But yeah, I do switch it on in a bit. And it quite happily uh, goes through a single yellow belt of iron. So we're going to finally need to look at uh, expanding our smelting soon once we've got on top of this power issue. And also at some point sorted out uh, a proper source of iron. Because at the moment the Javolite source just isn't isn't enough to satisfy our future needs. We're going to have to push up to the, the Sapphirite. And I also made a little attempt there to try and start tidying up the power poles, which are still in a complete and utter mess at the moment. Uh, so I have a little sort out my inventory, get a rid of a few things that we don't need. Uh, it's, it's all a bit of a mess, really. 
Uh, that's going to become a logistics chest and all that will, will get fed back into the system later on. Probably wasting a little bit. So now we've got the coal supply back up and running. Uh, we are still short on power, which is due to lack of steam engine. So we go back up to place that set of two sets of boilers and engines that I did produce last episode. Uh, we finally get those placed in to add to the power production. Uh, and with these, I decide to use electronic inserters this time because I only need a few rows using burners uh, and it is a bit more efficient to use electronic inserters. Now, I've never really bothered with Mark II, Mark III uh, boilers and engines, but I think I'm going to this series at some point, but I've never really seen a massive uh, difference. I mean, I think they're slightly more efficient or in terms of space. I don't even know if they're efficient in terms of fuel. But, yeah, I'll give it a go. I need to have a look at the ratios again because I'm not sure what they are. I've only ever done the 14-10 ratio. So we get that laid out. Uh, still using the basic poles for these because I don't really see any point to use the medium ones. Uh, and it kind of looks nice having it laid out with the various types doing their job. So we remove the last of the temporary base and it's gone. No more temporary base. There's just the actual factory now uh, which isn't really temporary but it could be used as a factory to build yet another huge factory and we continue to clean up the basic electronic poles which just a mess they're horrible but i will do some tidying up in between and get rid of those uh, i decide to connect this back up just to test it uh, i consider starting some blue science and don't really see anything worth it because anything I can build with it needs more OBS products being produced, which I don't want to do yet. I need to address the uh, the resource issue before we go down that path because it's going to need next levels of ore sorting, all kind of things to, to get the products we need to advance. Now, while uh, continuing to, to address our next agenda, we get attacked. Um, we lose a few uh, sulfuric acid pipes, which I come down to sort out. And we put some some very crude turret placement. Uh, and then we go on the search for where those biters came from. Checking on the coal briefly along the way. Uh, we come down and deal with another new base down here uh, at the south wall that's attacking it from the wrong side. And while we're down here, we get attacked back on the main bus. It's... It suddenly becomes a spree of uh, attacking. So I leave a bunch of turrets to prevent them coming back in the future. It does take out the last spawner. Uh, and we come up and deal with this all spitter group jumping out the car on the move quite dangerously. I don't think I've ever actually been hit by my own car. But yeah, the bastards come and destroy a load of my belts on the main bus. Which just isn't cool. So I produce a few, but I also go and rob some off the red science, uh, red and green science area. And we come and get this fixed up. Uh, I get really lazy and decide to, to whack out the nanobots. Because why not? You know, there's a bunch of messy belts. The, the blueprints were there. Uh, and we also fix up some belts that I didn't finish placing before. So we head back in the really speedy car. Um, with my amazing driving at these kind of speeds. No, I'm joking. My driving is absolutely terrible. It just looks like I'm driving really fast. And um, we come and take out this base. And while we're doing it, we get a rather large group trying to hunt me down uh, in the process. And I decide to place a group of turrets to stay behind. To stop any future bases from uh, coming and camping out here. So we head back and we can finally start working on the second agenda for this episode. Which is to create another uh, little temporary production line, which is pretty much what we had before. Uh, this is to produce what we need next episode next episode is going to be the first big episode of just biter slaying it's going to be a massive round of just slaughtering biters uh, i've decided where i want to clear now you probably think i'm crazy because i have virtually no resources but it's the first push that needs doing to get resources it's basically the area around the javolite mines the reason I haven't placed all the mines out is simply because we would just produce way too much pollution to be able to defend there. So we're going to need to push the biters back. And if we succeed, that should allow us to mine 
the full Javolite uh, field and give us a bit more of a boost of iron to then potentially work towards getting that Saffrite up at the north. But that is so deep into to bite te territory. That's going to be uh, a huge push. Depending on how long this push takes me, I'll be able to work out how long the next one will be. Uh, we do get attacked a couple of times while setting this up, which is a bit irritating. I'm um, trying to build away and the bikes just come along and piss me off. Uh, but we get some level 1 and level 2 turret production set up. Uh, we then have to place the sniper turrets again for the sniper turret production. Uh, we do keep getting attacked here. But yeah, I'm also going to do some piercing round production in a minute, which is mental because that absolutely churns through your steel and copper. Copper I'm not so worried about. I've got so much copper in storage. But uh, we're going to need the piercing rounds because I've already pushed the evolution into, I believe, 0.4. Uh, we've already got level 3 biters and I think I've seen some level 3 spitters earlier. So to begin with, if I'm pushing back the amount of biters I'm thinking of, by the end of it we're going to have pushed the evolution quite a bit. So we're going to need piercing rounds, so why not start with it rather than get caught out. Um, so we get that set up, we get four... Uh, assemblers doing piercing rounds and the sniper turret production just isn't quite quick enough for me so in a minute I do look at getting some level 3 assemblers which are now all really weird colours I'm not used to it yellow's usually the level 3 assemblers uh, but they're now grey, yellow then red uh, it, it is a bit confusing but it is all in line with the, the shiny bobs so as I get used to that it will be a lot better uh, but yeah, still takes some getting used to. And then whenever I go back to a vanilla game now, it's going to be even more confusing. So we get some red level 3 assemblers placed out for all of the major production there, just to speed it up a bit. But yeah, next episode we're going to war. It's going to be a lot of this, a lot of uh, turret creeping and slaughtering. And we're going to potentially push the uh, evolution up, maybe even double what it is now, which is going to be pretty dangerous. Uh, we're walking a fine line of resources and staying alive at the moment. Uh, but I really want to get these crude defences out of the way. They're, they're just not effective. They're very messy. I have to manually keep uh, an eye on them. Uh, but if we got a proper perimeter set up with some sort of ammo loading system, uh, we can be uh, we can be a lot safer. We can be a lot more confident in um, just sitting in the base and, and getting production set up. So yeah, that's that's what we're doing now. We're just getting that all that production in place so that we have enough turrets, have enough ammunition. The car dies at this bit, which is a bit of a weird experience. And it's also going to be using a lot more iron. So I start looking at uh, improving the Javolite supply. But yeah, we have a look at the map now. Uh, this is the area that I'm going to be pushing out. There's a nice bit of water coming out of the that lake to the west there down, creating a nice natural barrier. I'm um, essentially just going to create a big wall around the copper and oil that's out there so we can obtain that uh, and we're going to wall it in. It's usually a method I do in my personal playthroughs using the bottlenecks which I have spoken about before. Um, natural defences basically. So we head down to the Javolite mining area to uh, place a few more miners to make sure a good supply of Javolite is coming through but again I don't, I don't want to cover the whole patch yet. Um, to, you know, not produce too much pollution and piss the biters off too much. Uh, and we see the train waiting coming out of Javo like there, which shows that the uh, train waiting system is working well. Uh, I almost forget to, to get back in the car, and then I realise uh, I don't want to. I want to upgrade the sorting now. We've we've increased the Javo like mining a little bit. Uh, let's increase the sorting. And then I've realised I've run out of steel, so I have to get in the car, head over to the, sorry, iron uh, smelting area, pick up some iron, and that allows us to build the next level of uh, ore crushing and sorting, which is off the Bob's shiny colouring. They go grey, blue, 
Then I think it's red, then the last one's yellow. So that's nice and confusing there. And we also upgrade the inputs and output belts or the sorting system. I don't think I need to do the crushing. I might have to do the input from the station, but as that's coming in on two belts, two yellow belts, I think is the equivalent of a red. I think that might be what it, what it is, double. Uh, but we get that set up and we have a look to make sure that's all running smoothly. And also the ore output needs upgrading for the last in bit of belt inserters and loader. So that should uh, increase our overall uh, iron production. But that's going to be all we have time for. Next episode is going to be a fun episode. It's going to be full on biter slaughtering. So yeah, please do come and join me. We're going to kill a hell of a lot of biters and uh, see how cheeky I can be and see how far we can push the evolution uh, maybe to the point where we can't even handle it with our turrets but yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll hopefully see you guys next time bye bye